Well, what's going to happen if I find out that I've been misinformed and spreading misinformation? Well, you've seen it happen today. Um, we got a whole bunch of new information uh, about uh, the situation in which Leon was found. And now a whole lot more things make sense than uh, were making sense to us before. Now, a uh, whole bunch of stuff. I've put a little essay together that I'm partly just reading off my teleprompter because I put it into an order that kind of makes sense. So, here we go. Um, in this sort of healing situation, there are going to be advances and setbacks. I'm probably only going to do these updates about once a week uh, because we want to see a, a trend towards improvement before we start reporting improvement. Uh, there is improvement and everything I put into the first video is also going to be in this video and uh, that's working. There was a great deal about uh, what happened uh, leading up to uh, Sunday, February 6th when Leon was found and uh, a lot of what we believed turns out to be wrong. In the Bigfoot world, we have seen very frequently how misinformation becomes accepted as truth by mere repetition. My first words in social media were, I don't know, precisely because so many people are loath to say those words. Another phrase, to the effect of, I won't discuss that right now, is far better than the misinformation often delivered as the so-called little white lie, which spreads crap where silence would be far more honest. This is how rumors get started. So if anyone saw the video I posted this morning, part of it is based on misinformation, which led to our misinterpreting other information in trying to put together the story of what actually happened. This actually is someone's fault. We won't go into that any further here. But to say it's not anyone's fault would be more misinformation. Now, I hesitated to bring up the, the story of what happened because there were a bunch of things that just didn't quite make sense. Leon was last seen on Thursday, February 3rd, and he was actually feeling pretty miserable at that time. He was seen by someone boarding the animals on the property where he rents the house. And that person helped us to fill in what makes much more sense than uh, what we knew up to today. By the way, uh, she is a nurse who specializes in complex medical conditions, so he was found by an appropriate professional. Friday and Saturday, uh, she had seen the lights on in Leon's room but didn't want to disturb him. But by Sunday, her sense of something being wrong uh, was just too great, and around 10 a.m., uh, she went into the home to see. It's unclear how long he was in a bad state, uh, but it was almost certainly more than a day, as that makes much more sense now. Uh, the reason I say that is part of his ICU treatment was dialysis, and that makes more sense as a complication of dehydration is kidney damage. So th that makes a lot more sense. Um, what we thought was a call by Leon on Sunday around noon was this nurse. Uh, Leon's boss had sent him a text message to ask if he was going to be in on Monday, and she used his phone to uh, call him back and say, no, Leon's not going to be to work on Monday. The rest of this is going to be basically from the, uh, the first update I published. And so if you heard it then, it's just restated here. Um, as you know, Leon worked in the uh, mental health industry, and our society has some really dysfunctional stigmas about certain conditions. So for anyone who has not known someone who's been through something like this, like, like a stroke or a seizure, let me try to explain some things. The medical treatment of either of these conditions is very much the same, and so is how the brain goes about healing. The injured brain is trying to evolve new neural pathways around the damaged parts, trying to reconnect things. 
In the process, these pathways will randomly touch memories and ideas and experiences and bring them to consciousness. Depending on the seriousness of the uh, injury, this can happen while sleeping or while awake. When sleeping, these can be really terribly intense, realistic dreams and nightmares. While waking, these can manifest in strong mood changes and often delusional behavior because it can be a lot like a waking dream. These thoughts are randomly coming into your awareness and consciousness and you have no idea why. This doesn't mean that this is the way the brain's going to stay. Um, you can look at it a couple of different ways. One way is to be frightened and it is frightening to watch. It is disturbing to watch, and uh, these delusional states will not necessarily be part of the person's long-term future. It is the brain trying to rewire itself. For the short term, it's going to be part of the process of healing, and it may persist for some time. The other way to look at it, and this is really actually kind of appropriate, um, is to realize that these connections are being completely made at random. It, it's the brain wiring new paths, and to that extent, honestly, it's uh, kind of like a Laurel and Hardy rewiring a computer show. Work with the patient when these things come up. Talk to them. Talk about what they're thinking, what they're experiencing. See how it might fit into things. It may not. Remember, this is all just random, and it may have nothing at all relevant to, to the situation. It's just the brain trying to heal itself. Um, over the last couple of weeks, a whiteboard has been put up in his room with information to help him focus, and this does really seem to have helped. Uh, it includes information like when he was found, who's been visiting, who plans to visit in the near future, uh, within a few days of this going up, uh, he's shown a lot of improvement in his awareness of what's going on. Uh, late last week, they were able to talk to him and sift through what was really happening and what was just part of this healing process with the brain throwing things into his thinking process during the day. For some of the last couple of weeks, he's been grumpy and moody, and he has shooed visitors away after a few minutes. Uh, because of that, it's been hard to tell if his motor skills have improved much, but it's not to worry too much about that yet. I'll circle back to that in a couple minutes. Cognitively, though, Leon's getting back. Um, he's harassing the nurses and is becoming a favorite patient. Uh, there was a nurse, for example, that was... Uh, they're helping him eat and to observe uh, how he was eating and how he was swallowing to make sure the motor function was working okay. And uh, Heidi, who's helping to run the uh, GoFundMe, was visiting. She's a very good friend of Leon's. The nurse started to talk to Heidi, and Leon uh, spoke up that, hey, you're supposed to be paying attention to me, not my friend. He's being a complicated patient. <laughs> if things continue along the, the current trajectory, uh, we hope that in a couple of weeks he's likely to be moved to a rehab hospital that specializes in uh, brain injuries to work on getting back better use of his arms and legs. And I said before not to worry too much about that uh, because of multiple experiences with people who've had strokes and seizures. And even weeks after the injury, uh, they may have minimal use of arms and legs. But uh, after a few months of what is going to be pretty intense therapy, uh, you can generally get back to pretty good motion, uh, certainly enough to be independent and often uh, just plain normal motion. But it takes a long time. We've all seen this in TV shows and movies where it's all done by the end of the hour. And no, it takes a long time. It's a slow process. But the fact that his mental state is improving and his mood is improving is really vital to making progress in this kind of recovery. Uh, please consider the GoFundMe to help cover his living expenses because this recovery is expected to take months and uh, even certainly as long as a year. 
once again, uh, thank you very much. Send warm thoughts to Leon. And uh, when I see your comments in uh, chats and uh, watching things going on in the Bigfoot world, I will uh, pass your concerns and your uh, hopes for his recovery along to him. Thank you very much.